Hello everyone. In in the video that we're gonna do today, we're gonna look at the NSG, and the NSG is nothing but network security group. Now I have whole bunch of resource groups here. Uh, in these two resource group, I have a, a Ubuntu system installed. Now in this resource group, if I go there, there's really nothing in there. I had some stuff. I completely cleaned it out. A lot of times when you uh, use Azure to deploy a virtual machine, Azure will actually deploy a whole bunch of stuff for you and you do not even realize that they, Azure is actually doing it. For example, if I go to this resource group, this is a little bit slow today, uh, but you will see that although I only wanted to deploy a virtual machine, Azure actually created a whole bunch of different things so I really went and deployed the Ubuntu machine but it created look at that a Ubuntu IP public IP address it created a default NSG it created a network interface card a disk um, a storage account and a virtual uh, VNet for us so let's see if we can deploy another machine in here and see what we can uh, do to tell Azure not to deploy a whole bunch, just a uh, you know, little bit of it maybe. All right, let's see. Uh, again, I'm sorry that it's going slow, but it's not uh, something I can control. Uh, within the COVID situation, probably people are using this uh, cloud services a lot more than usual. I'm definitely seeing some latency. All right, let's click on it one more time. Okay, create a resource group. Uh, I don't need to create a resource group. I already have a resource group. So what I'll uh, what I'll do um, uh, Ubuntu. This is what I need to do. Virtual machines. So I just want to create a new virtual machine in that resource group, but I don't want to create the NSC because I want to manually create the NSG for that machine. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, we're back to this window under the virtual machines and I wanted to add a new machine over here. So let's see, and uh, uh, it's taking some time, so I'm you know, having trouble recording the video. I don't wanna to waste too much of your time. So if it doesn't go, we'll probably do the video uh, some other time, but I'm gonna give it a couple more um, minutes maybe. Okay, this came up pretty fast. So uh, resource group, I wanted to create it right in this resource group. Virtual machine name, um, let's say no NSG to begin with. That's uh, my <laughs> virtual machine name. Uh, everything else I can keep the same here. I'm just gonna use a password. Um, now what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna allow any ports to begin with okay so this is something we will do at a later point so here if you say that allow selected port it will create your NSG and it will allow that port but right now I don't want to do anything I just want to create the machine uh, I don't need a premium a standard HDD is fine um, encryption I don't care about any of that stuff right now so networking is another place where you can do stuff now I think uh, I already have a, a virtual net so I'm okay with that with the subnet I'm also okay uh, and then public IP that's also fine you can create a public IP but the public IP shouldn't do anything much nick yeah let's go ahead and create a nick now public inbound port see that because i said there's there shouldn't be any connection open it's saying none which that's what i want 
accelerator networking i don't want that load balancing i don't want that so let's go to management see if we need to do anything there booting i usually like to uh, turn it on everything it will just gonna create a storage account that is fine with me uh, identity i don't usually use use this too much auto uh, shutdown is something i highly recommend everyone to use if it's a development machine if any really especially if you're practicing and if you want to save some money Notification before shut down. You can keep it open. I don't really care about it. Yeah, shut it down. If it's shut down, I'll just turn it turn it back up on. Uh, backup, I don't care about at this time. Uh, let's go to advance uh, tags. I don't need any of that. Review and create. And uh, let's create something. Okay. So no NSG. So that's. Uh, about a cent per hour oh um, my god that's uh, yeah that's a uh, no, no 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 hold on hold on I think I want to change the disk type I can get a better price on this okay so let's go there and I, this is kind of by default Microsoft is choosing and they're recommending hey guys I use this one but I have even a cheaper version available it's like cost per month is three bucks and I'm this is just for testing, so I'm just gonna go with this and I'm be very happy person. So just select it and uh, review and create. And I think before you they create, they're gonna tell you how much they're uh, how much it's gonna cost you again. And let's see, it's much much less, right? So I'm happy with the price, so I'm gonna create this machine and then. You will see how we can use the NSG to configure to open up the course. So NSG, think about NSG as like a firewall. Right now, what you are doing, you 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 have a, you have a VNet, and within the VNet, you're assigning a private IP. Microsoft is giving you a public IP, but there is no ports that are that are open, so you cannot even log into that to that machine from anywhere unless you are on on a, on the same vnet so if i create another virtual machine in here and somehow get into that virtual machine and from that virtual machine i can go to this virtual machine <laughs> but <coughs> otherwise there's no way to get to that virtual machine now this deployment may take just a few minutes so i'll let it deploy and we'll pause the video and we'll come back in just a second all right, my friends, my deployment is complete. So once the deployment is done, you see this screen. Um, there's few things that uh, uh, Microsoft would recommend, like set up auto shutdown, which we have already done. Uh, some other things that we are not gonna do at this time, and then it's gonna say go to the resource, okay? And it's saying, yeah, connected. So SSH let's see what happens all right so connect via ssh connect and all that uh, let's go back uh, in here i don't have a key because we just said that we have a uh, what we have a password based authentication enable so first of all let's see if we can even get to this machine using ssh typically like i have to like this machine i have this is another vm looks like i'm that vm is currently turned off so this is another vm in the west us so let's do a ping google.com so yeah that vm is working just fine Okay, so the way you just log in, you just do SSH and then username and then you provide the public IP, okay? So we're gonna do the exactly same thing what we did before. So we'll come over here, we'll do SSH. That's the username, admin username to the new machine is this, 233. And we're gonna try to SSH, but notice that the SSH is not going anywhere. Now why is it not going anywhere? Because there is no port open. We cannot connect to this IP because although it's a public IP, we have not defined anything. 
So let's uh, go to the resource group and see what what is going on. Okay. Uh, we can just go back to the home page resource group and in here let's see what we have so we have a vnet we have a storage account we have a virtual machine we have a public ip oh there is an nsg look at that even though i didn't configure anything anything microsoft still created an nsg for me i have a network interface and a disk so let's look at what did microsoft do for us in this NSG looks like they have already created some inbound and outbound rules now these are the default rules and what we care about is to configuring the inbound rules at this time so now uh, allow vnet inbound any any virtual network virtual network so from a virtual network in the same subnet I can get to that computer from a load balancer I can get to the computer but anything else right now is a deny and look at that if you want to delete this you can do that there's a default is too bad so what we need to do we need to configure at least one more uh, one more inbound rule that's gonna allow and open up port 22 so that we can connect from my laptop to the virtual machine so do that uh, we're already in the NSG played in here I'm gonna go to inbound security rules and the all the security rules uh, you can like turn it off that will go take take off all the default rules but that doesn't mean they're deleted they're still there so what do you want to do you want to add something which is higher priority any number that is smaller than these three number is would be the higher priority so what we want to do source any source anybody with any IP and with any port because when you try to connect to something your computer the computer that you're using it can randomly assign any number any port numbers you don't know so it you just keep it a wildcard and put star now destination here uh, what do we want to do we can provide the IP address and we can provide let me think on that what do we really need to provide we can provide the public IP address so let's start with that okay and we know that that's the uh, destination IP address or CID ranges we can provide both okay here look at the provide the IP address of the CID here it's actually telling you it's actually telling you to give you the uh, so the private IP address so let's go get the private IP address for this machine so let's uh, open up this tab one more time in here okay and let's go to the virtual machine where is my virtual machine okay and then the private IP address we'll get that one we're gonna use this one uh, in our network security group okay so we'll just go give this and then destination port we want to give 22 okay and protocol uh, you can keep it any and you can say okay allow uh, action is allowed so if somebody is trying to connect to that port it will be allowed uh, do I need to configure anything else let's see source IP address source port destination protocol uh, SSH is since it's a TCP connection we can probably uh, stick to TCP connection it's not UDP and it's not ICMP and priority let's use thousand as a priority and here port I'll just call it port SSH and add it so once you add it it's added in there if you create you take your mouse over here it's uh, showing up as like a danger sign that means you have this port open and now it says that port is successfully open okay so now if we go back to my uh, Ubuntu machine and try to connect to this IP let's see what happens 
all right <laughs> so now microsoft is able to route my traffic from my machine it went to this public ip portion of the network card the network card has an internal ip which is this ip right here that's this internal ip it routed the traffic through port 22 and now my machine is saying hey do you trust this server okay i'm gonna say yes and then okay it says okay we are gonna permanently trust this uh, guy so what is your password so let's put the password and there we go so now it's just taking a little bit of time now i'm inside this virtual machine look at that so a basu and then non and no nsg to begin with so that's the virtual machine name that i uh, went in now while we are here let's test something can we ping the outside world so ping google.com and look at that so so the default by default microsoft the nsc that microsoft defines for you it always allows outbound connection to the internet although when we created we said yeah we don't want any port to open not even the ssh port but if you look at it once we open it when we got into the computer if we wanted to uh, ping to the outside it still allowed the connection so when you're designing your infrastructure keep that in mind in, in a lot of time maybe you want to restrict your outbound traffic maybe you, you want to validate where your outbound traffic is going and you may want to allow certain type of connection so while we are here let's quickly take a look at the outbound security rule and here you can say allow vnet outbound it's always from one vnet to another vnet it will go allow internet outbound this is also allowed and anything else that's not started from this computer that would be denied okay but but if you if you're going to the internet explorer or doing ping anything that's connect that's starting from uh that that computer it's allowed to go to the go to the internet so hopefully this gives you a little bit of idea of what the nsc and how it's being applied so you have a virtual network that virtual network restrict your ips and it it gives you a, a segregation from your overall all ip space when you get and when you have the segregation now you want to segregate yourself and only open up the ports that you want to open and you want to have the communication so that's where the network security group comes in and you can define you know uh, what port you want to open you can say the priority and you can do all kinds of stuff but in a nutshell this is what you do and there are some other things that you can do but we'll probably come back to this uh, later i think uh, there was one place where uh, you can actually go and uh, figure out if your uh, inbound rules and outbound rules if they're working properly that kind of stuff uh, but we'll cover that in a different video uh, hopefully you have a good understanding of nsg and thank you for watching the video uh, good luck good luck with your exam preparation